Hey guys, how's it going and welcome to my Miscraft H writing tutorial. The goal with this video is to give you a framework, something to lean against when you're sitting there in your chair and creating your perfect Miscraft H. Uh, I'm also trying not to spoil anything because this, mis uh, this mod is all about exploration, it's all about finding out cool things and trust me, <laughs> this mod is freaking epic guys. So yeah, for your convenience, I've also added in the description of this video a little cheat sheet that I find very useful for uh, building any age. Uh, it basically tells you the order you need to put things in. So check that out after the video. It will make more sense after I've <laughs> instructed you what it, what it actually is, right? Uh, guys, as always, if you enjoy this video or if you find it helpful, uh, hit the like button down below. That is very much appreciated. And of course, if you're new to my channel, be sure to not miss out on any tutorials or epic giveaway sessions that I do here. So hit the subscribe button as well. Alright guys, without further ado, here's my tutorial. Enjoy! Alright guys, so I take it that you are ready to start mastering the art of writing miscraft ages. I'm glad, because I want to show you the basics. I want to give you a framework today for how to do this. Um, the first thing you will need is a crap ton of pages. Before you even consider uh, starting to write your first H slash dimension, because that's essentially what it is, uh, you will need to, to collect a, a crap ton of pages, trust me. Uh, now, pages, you can find them either in dungeons or you can find them in, in other loot mods that you may have installed. And the best way, the pro tip way of doing it is to find a villager, a miscraft villager like this guy over here. Uh, you can identify them by their stupid looks and big noses and arms that won't pull apart. But every villager looks like that. You're right, but this guy has a uh, purple coat and a yellow lining. Hi, <laughs> hi guy! Um, so let's 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 do some trading with this guy just to show you how he works because he is not working like a vanilla villager. As you can see, he will offer you this page, the jungle edged biome, for one emerald. So we'll buy that off of him and then we'll let him reset. You see, in a post, as opposed to vanilla villagers, this guy doesn't give you a new trading page. He will simply reset the one he had. So as you can see, the arrow is still grayed out, but he's now selling us a notebook. And this is actually according to me, the best trade you can get. I'll show you why. Let's buy that for 20 emeralds and then open it up. Look at that. Look at all the pages he just sold us. And as far as I know, these are completely random. So you could get, you know, you could get very, very rare pages in here. Let's do one more trade and see what he, what he offers us. Oh, another notebook. That is, that is amazing. Awesome. And in here you can see a lot of uh, different pages. So, Pretty quickly, if you get your hands on a villager, a miscraft villager, you will be able to uh, stack up on pages. Now, the next thing you need to do is to start organizing these pages. Because, yes, organization and structure may take some time to build up. But, trust me, once you get into age writing and once you become that art master of writing ages, you will want to have things organized. Now, there are obviously... <laughs> as many different ways of organizing things as there are humans playing Minecraft. But um, I would recommend trying to stick with uh, sorting those uh, pages that are called biomes in one book, meteors in another, etc, etc. There is actually a pretty good guide to this available in creative mode. So if you jump into creative mode just like I have, and then you use the tabs, the creative tabs, and you scroll to your miscraft tab, which looks like this, uh, Xcompwiz, who is the author of this mod, have categorized the books pretty well. So you have biome distributors, you have celestials, effects, etc, etc. That's a pretty good way to categorize it. So my, my advice, jump into Creative World, check out how he categorized stuff and then um, do something similar. Now, once you've got once you've started your categorization, you do that, by the way, by putting pages in notebooks. You can craft notebooks by combining three letters in the victory shape of a V, uh, and then just add the pages into the book. Once you've done that, you can come over to your drawing or writing desk, sorry, uh, right click on that and put the book in here. Now you're able to name it. Look at that. So imagine that this book would only contain biomes, I'll name it and then I'll put it in this slot, for example. As you can see on the left hand side here, a lot of these uh, um, kind of containers are available to you and I would call them slots in the writing desk. I don't know if, no, the book isn't visible, but anyway. Um, and by doing so, you'll have a good categorized and structured way of working with Miscraft.
Luckily, I've already prepared the categorizations. I'm actually using XCOMP with categorizations for this tutorial. Uh, so as you can see here, we have a bunch of different things on the left hand side. We can even scroll down and wow, <laughs> this mod literally have hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of these pages. Uh, I was considering counting them, but I didn't. Come here, you. Oh, I need some paper. There we go. All right. Uh, so let's start getting into the art and the mastering of <laughs> writing an age. All right, guys, so the first pro tip that I want to give you when it comes to start writing your age is that you can copy pages. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. You can make pirate copies. I think that they are that they are uh, legal though, so, so don't worry. Uh, all you need is some paper in this slot here and an ink vial here. An ink vial is another uh, item that you need a lot of in Miscraft. And the way you craft it is two ink sacks or black dice and a water bottle. Just like that. You can also do it this way, but uh, nah, that's, that's more expensive. And then just simply right click the pages. So say that I would like to have this birch forest biome. I have no idea why I would want it because uh, personally I freaking hate birches. They're they're disgusting. But anyway, if I would want it, I could right click it. Boom, look at that. At the cost of some ink, I now have my own copy of the birch forest biome. Very important to know. All right, so now we're ready to actually cr start creating our first age. Um, be warned, this mod requires patience and this mod requires you to practice, all right? It is not very simple. And I'm here to give you a framework of, uh, of how you work with ages, how the grammar system in Miscraft works, how the Miscraft gods anticipates our pages. That is what I'm here to teach you. And then, of course, um, I, I don't want to spoil this mod too much to you. So there are so many freaking cool stuff you can do. And once you master the art of age writing, you'll be able to write ages that are just sickly overpowered. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, but the first thing you would want is a clean notebook. So again, that's the crafting recipe. Make sure that it's empty by right clicking. It, it opens up the book's inventory. Then right click your writing desk where you've hopefully sorted your pages already. And uh, before you before you get into this, you need to have a, an idea of what you want to do, obviously, because uh, it's all about uh, what you want to do. It's it's <laughs> you decide you decide your own dimension, which is cool with this mod. Uh, I think that I want to do a basic digging world, a world where I can put my quarries up and where I can do some mining. I know that that is a popular world, and uh, I think it's a good way to not spoil the mod while showing you the framework. The first thing you will want, and you'll notice that I've ordered these in the ways that we are going to add them to our world, or age, but the first thing you'll want to decide upon is which biome do I want. You can use the search bar up here if you've got like <laughs> hundreds of pages like I do, and for me, I'm going to go with the plains biome. I, I like the biome and it can spawn villages, which is important to me, because <laughs> I want to murder villagers. Um, so there we go, that's the plains biome. I right click again that to copy it, and I'll put it here for now. All right, so next are the biome distributors. Uh, these are what tells the god of miscraft how we want our biomes to be distributed. It's as simple as that. And our biomes are what we, whatever we show. And remember, we only selected one biome. We selected the plains biome. You could potentially select 50 of these if you want. Uh, but let's have a look at our options. We have the grid form based distribution, huge, large, medium, native, tiny, tiled, and small biome distribution. Uh, these are, mm, they require a bit of difference uh, in, in what biomes you put in. Um, let's, let's first talk about the single biome distribution because that is pretty straightforward. This guy here, if you select it, which I'm going to do, so right click, you can only ever have one biome, all right? So it requires exactly one biome. If you put more biomes in, it will cause something caused in, uh, called instability, which we will talk about later in this tutorial. Um, we have the tile biome distribution, which requires exactly two biomes. If you put any more in, again, it will cause instability. Uh, then the others, I believe you can add minimum of three biomes, and I don't think there is a cap really. But as always, if something I say is wrong, make sure that you make a comment of it, a friendly comment, so that other viewers can, can benefit from that comment. But I believe that you require min minimum of three for, for the other ones here. Now we know that we have selected a plains biome and we want to this to modify a single biome distribution. That is how the miscraft grammar works. So this biome will modify a single biome distribution. This is our adjective basically to the single biome distribution. Very cool. 
Uh, trust me, <laughs> this all makes sense. Next, we'll move on to our world landscapes. World landscapes are these pages here. We have Amplified World, Cave World, Flat, Island, Standard World, and Avoid World. Now, these are uh, some of these you may actually recognize for when you create your single player world. For example, you can select, yeah, I want to play in an Amplified World because I got a beefy computer and it looks freaking epic. Uh, you also recognize flat world because uh, flat world is yeah you can you can select that and go creative and <laughs> it's easier to to build and try out things. Um, K world is pretty much like the Nether. It has a roof. It has a roof and then <laughs> obviously also a floor. Um, island world yeah that's self-explanatory. Standard world is just your standard vanilla. Um, um, creation basically and then a void world would create a completely dark and black <laughs> and a big space of nothingness all right for my uh, digger world I'm gonna go with the flat world so let's right click that and let's put that there let's just move move over emeralds don't need you right now okay the next thing we want to go to is the weather modifier or weather page uh, we need to select what type of weather we want and this is pretty cool we could select eternal weather we could select eternal storm who the freak would want eternal storm i i i don't get that but i don't know um i'm gonna go with no weather i don't want any rain i don't want any thunder strikes or any craziness going on i'm i'm <laughs> i'm a normal guy i just want to mine please don't rain on my head so i'm gonna go with that next is lighting so here we get the option to select uh, what type of lighting should be the default in our world. We have the bright lighting, we have the dark lighting, and we have the normal lighting. Bright lighting will make it so that even if it should be dark, for example, if you, if you don't have any torches down, it will be bright. Uh, but it will only be visibility bright. So... What does that? What the heck does that mean? Well, mobs will still be able to spawn. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I like it. Dark lighting is the opposite. So even if you put down a torch, it will still appear as if it's dark. Uh, and normal lighting is is you know preferred by me. That's that's just that's just how I work. You you know by now that I want I want everything normal. So for me, I'm gonna pick that. That's just vanilla normal uh, lighting. Now it's time to move over to Celestials. Celestials is what controls anything that is in the sky. So, for example, our sun, our stars, and our moon. Where are you? There you are. And guess, guess what, guys? I'm gonna go with... We have the option to do dark, which would completely remove them, I believe. Uh, we could also do something super cool, like an ender star field. That would make the sky look all noisy. Again, I don't want to spoil things too much. I want you to, to have fun with this mod. But I'm gonna go with normal stuff. A normal sun, please. Normal moon, please. Thank you. And normal stars. Awesome. <laughs> that, is, that is how we roll. All right. Uh, now we have two new categories called terrain alterations and populators. These are very very similar. If we go to terrain alterations you'll see that we can find things like caves and floating islands, ravines etc. If we go to populators we'll find things like deep lakes, we'll find obelisks, nether fortresses etc. The only difference between these two are how they work in the Minecraft code. Some of them are added upon chunk generation and some of them are added as the algorithm of Minecraft. And that's basically the difference. So you don't really need to care about that and go ahead and merge these two categories if you want. Uh, what's important here, and this is where the art of writing an age really comes into play. Because the Miscraft gods, they will, if you leave stuff out, they will say, okay, this guy doesn't want caves or anything, but you know what, I'm gonna add in a bunch of randomness. Uh, so the, less, the, the lesser of these you add in, the more randomness will occur and the risk for instability. So I would recommend at least getting a few of these. I mean, who doesn't want caves in their world? So I'm gonna add in one, two, and three caves. Yeah, I'll tell the Miscraft world uh, god that please give us caves. Don't give us crazy skylands or uh, tendrils or anything else. Give us caves. And then if we go over to populators, yeah, I'd like some mine shafts, please. So I'll add in two mine shafts that will raise the um, importance of mine shafts when the world is generated. I also want dungeons. Yeah, for sure, I want some dungeons. So I'm gonna add in that. So a total of seven pages is what I'm going to go with. Uh, I don't think there's a set number for where the Miscraft gods won't interfere with your world, but I just I just find it the more the merrier for this topic. Next, we, we will move to effects. Now, these are pretty crazy. Check this out. We have accelerated, which will accelerate the tick rate of the game in your age. We have lightning, meteors, scorched surface, and spontaneous explosions. These are pretty crazy. Uh, for my world, that is pretty normal. I don't want any of these, so I'm just gonna leave them out. I, I don't want any of them. 
Um, they have their ups though, and I'll talk about that later. Now, let's move on to visuals. These are things that we see with our eyes, and I am going to say, uh, hmm, what do I want here? I want a natural, natural world. So let's go with a natural grass color. Let's add that in. You don't have to add visuals, by the way. This is, uh, this is highly up to you, but I, I want stuff to look natural. So I'll add foliage and grass color to be natural. That's good for me. Now, guys, <laughs> now we have our core of our age. Uh, we could go ahead and write this age, but we haven't really decided upon much. Uh, now is where we get to play with the awesomeness of this mod called Modifiers. What I recommend you to do is to open up the book and start putting in the pages that we've selected. So let's go through it at the same time. We selected a plains biome. We want that to modify the single biome distribution. Now, if you wonder why I talk weirdly like this about modifying and all that, you'll understand in a second. No, you worry. The next thing we said was that we want a flat world. All right. Now, we could go ahead and write this, but that <laughs> we then we would let the miscraft gods decide what that flat world be, will be made out of. Okay, so there is where this is when we have to start to add adjectives or modifiers to the flat world. You see, um, the miscraft gods expect to know what type of base material should this flat world be made out of. In a vanilla world or in a in a standard generated world, it's stone, as you can see over there. Um, we also need to tell the Miscraft Gods what type of liquids that the liquids, the base liquids of the world should be generated out of. And in a normal world, it's water. So, <laughs> you know me, I want things to be pretty normal with this world. So, let's go and find a stone block page and a water block page. You'll find them if you have categorized them like XCOMP Wiz, you'll find them in the modifiers block book. So, let's search for water first of all. We have distilled water, that's no good. And down here we have the water block. Perfect, I'll pick that out. And we also want this stone block now you could go ahead and do something crazy here like adding obsidian if you if you'd like or netherrack i don't know uh with me i i pretty much want it normal so let's open up the book and let's say stone block and water block just like that so now we are saying our adjectives to the flat world should be stone block and a water block all right the next page was no weather there aren't any adjectives or modifiers for the no weather so i'll just put it in next we have the normal lighting same as there we can't really modify normal lighting it's normal so you know <laughs> that's all good uh, then we come to the normal sun here's where we can start to do some pretty crazy stuff in our if in our very normal world we need to tell the miscraft gods uh, we, we've already told them, give us a normal sum, please. But we need to tell them the direction, um, how it should, uh, how it should be faced. Uh, we could choose east, north, south, etc., um, and where it should be in the sky, and also the length of the state. Uh, and he here's what I'm gonna do. I want eternal day. I know that's a popular thing, and you can do it pretty easily. Find your way down to modifiers basic, I believe. Yes, here we go. As you can see, we have a, a lot of different phases and directions and stuff here. What I want is the zero length to to uh, to tell us how how lengthy the the thing that we are going to say it will be. Oh, and it's raining. Fantastic. And I want the scene it face. Uh, I want to say zero length scene it faced sun. Let me turn off the freaking rain. So a zero length scene it face would mean that the, uh, oops, that's the wrong button, uh, would mean that the sun is always in the scene it position, which is straight up right there. And as long as the sun is on the sky, we have daytime. So <laughs> we're pretty much giving ourselves eternal day, which is pretty freaking awesome. So let's put this in zero length scene it face, normal sun. We could do the same with the moon, but. I feel a bit crazy. I'm just going to leave it to the Miscraft Gods to decide whatever they want to do with the moon. And they could put it at the scene as well. So that we'll have both the sun and the and this moon there. But we'll see. That'll be a bit of a fun, a bit of a gamble. Next is the normal stars. We could, the only modifying thing that we could do here is to select what type of color the normal stars will have. We could say, for example, purple colors, but it's never going to be nighttime. So we're, we're never going to see these freaking stars anyway. So we don't need them. Um, now we've come to our features, our additions to the terrain or alterations to the terrain, and uh, we don't have any modifiers for them, so I'll just put them in our caves, our mineshaft. Some of the features do have modifying re requests, such as uh, tendrils or obelisks. You're able to, to specify what type of block they should be made out of. So you could, you could put diamond ore block, for example, uh, in, a, in a tendril, and you'd have tendrils everywhere with diamond blocks. <laughs> That's pretty sick, pretty overpowered, but I'm not going to do that. We're just going to go with 
pretty standard stuff here. The next thing we had was the natural uh, grass color and natural foliage color. Very good, so we'll, let's put them in. Now we're nearly done. Let's review it. We have a biome of planes modifying the single biome distributor. We have stone block and water block in a flat world that it's made out of as base. Uh, we have no weather, we have normal lighting, we have a zero length zenith phased sun, normal sun. We have a normal moon and we'll let the modifier, <laughs> the god modify what, what else with, happens with it. We have normal stars, we have a bunch of features and natural grass and natural foliage color. Very good. Alright, um, a few more things we should do though. Actually, you know what, we, we, I want to set the sky color to something, so let's go to Celestials, no, let's, let's go to, where, where is this thing? Oh, here it is, it's under Visuals, I believe, yeah, there we go, sky color, okay. So, let's pick out the sky color, and I would like to make it red, because I like red, and who, who doesn't want a red, cool looking sky in the rage? I do, um, so I'll pick out the red color from the modifiers colors and the sky color from the visuals. Very good. Uh, we also want to have a clear modifier page and to get that I believe it's not in the categorizations. I believe I need to open up the all symbol book that he has given us and obviously in your survival world you'll have to find this page. There we go, clear modifiers. Let me just put that in the basic modifiers is where I will put it. So, clear modifiers, boop, there you go, oh, <laughs> you can't really get it straight. Anyway, I'll make a copy of that, good. The clear modifiers will remove any dangling modifiers, basically any adjectives that doesn't really modify anything. So if you've messed up, uh, it will make sure to remove them so that we don't have instability. Again, we'll talk about instability later. I'll put that at the end of the page. And we also need to put in our sky color modifications, so I'll put that right here, that's, that's good. Uh, so this red color sky, oh that will look epic. Uh, the last thing we need for this book before we can write the age is a cover page. You will get them if you use your ink mixer. Put in some ink vials and some paper and you have your link panel page over here. Very good. I'll actually grab two of these because I'm going to need the other one in a second. Now, oh, let me get rid of this freaking book. That's not our age. We don't want all the pages. Uh, put the link panel page first. That is our cover for the book. We've already reviewed the book I think we're ready to write this age. You will notice that I have a lot of spaces and gaps in between That doesn't matter the miscraft gods will simply disregard them and for when 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 designing an age This is a pretty simple one, but when designing a huge age with a, with a lot of different uh, fact, Factors to it. This is a good way to keep organized and structured So I'll take this book and I'll head over to my book binder Make sure that you have leather in this slot, and then, for me, I'll just copy this book since I'm in creative, but you can't do this in survival. You just take it and put it there, and the notebook will now be empty, as you can see. I'll throw that away. Oh, damn it. Anyway, we have, we have our H here. We can go ahead and name it. I will name this H The Digger H. The Digger H. And pick out the descriptive book. This is the instructions for the Miscraft Gods. This is essentially our H. There's one more thing that you need to do, do before you head into that age, and this is probably, if you want to be able to come back, this is going to be your most important step. And trust me, things may go wrong with this age, so you will be wanting to come back. What you need is a piece of leather and that other cover page that we uh, created. Then put that together in a crafting bench like so. That will give you an unlinked linking book. Now, it's black, and if you look, let's see, what's a good position? I want to be able to, when I come back from my age, I want to end up here. So I'll shift and right click, boop, there you go, you have your linking book. This is your ticket back home, very, very important. You also need some book stands or some lecterns. I'll go with book stands because I think they look much cooler. They are crafted by two sticks and a piece of wood. Uh, you'll need this to be able to put down the linking book in the world that you create. I think we're ready, guys. <laughs> this is always a bit scary, as I said, the Miscraft Gods has a tendency to add in stuff, if, if you fail adding in something, they'll add in a bunch of stuff. Some of those could cause instability, so we'll just have to find out. I think this age should be pretty stable though, I, sh I, think, we, I think we are good. So what you want to do is go to your book stand or a lectern and put it down. Look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness, that looks so cool. Alright, and to enter the age, simply right click and I will stop the recording here because otherwise the world won't load. Alright, I think the world is about to pop. And, what the heck? 
It's freaking dark in here. Uh, so, so the first thing you'll notice is that you spawn on a cobblestone platform, just like this, right? A five by five, I believe it is. You'll always spawn on one of these, and it's important if you're in a void world. For me, it seems to have spawned me as well up in a big redwood tree. Notice that this is from a different mod, but it's here anyway. Um, so I'll just fly down to the surface so that we can see what we have here. Come on, there we go. Okay, so let's have a look at what we just created. Our own baby, our own baby age. Uh, first of all, we have the moon. That is a normal moon that's moving weirdly upwards. We have our sun stuck in the zenith position. I like that. That means eternal day. And check, check the sky out, guys. Pretty freaking epic. As you'll also notice, which is... Okay, this, this part hasn't loaded in. Let me reload that. Good. As you'll also notice, what is pretty freaking annoying is that we have some debuffs. This is because something in this world is not stable. Something was added in because I know that not, no, none of these pages were unstable. Something is added in that, was, that, that caused instability. It could be that the caves have been... Uh, uh, that they've be added in too many of these and uh, that that causes instability, but probably it's something else. I'll have to play around with it a little bit to find that out. As I said, this mod does require patience, guys. You won't master this art immediately. Uh, but as you can see, we have a flat world, we have some caves. Um, it's a plains biome, I believe. Yes, it's a plains biome. We have horses and all sorts of flowers from Botania, which is just because I have that <laughs> installed in my mod pack. Now, oh, to get back home. Put down the book stand, use your linking book, I'm actually going to take a sheeting copy of this and put that down there. This is our ticket back home. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back home and I'm going to try, oops, no, did I throw that book away? <laughs> no, did I destroy it? Let me see, let me see, come here, come on. No, there we go, there, there's our world, I thought I, I thought I deleted it. I will go back home. And I will try to just create the exact same world again and see if we get the same debuffs. Alright guys, some minor modifications later. Uh, we now have a perfectly stable world. As far as I can tell, we don't have any debuffs or any weirdness going on. And uh, the place looks beautiful for starting to dig, uh, dig into the ground. Uh, let me show you the modifications that I did. Let's right click the book. Um, the one thing that I don't know about, and this is this is pretty important, so if you know this, please do confirm it in the comments. But I'm I'm assuming that XComp Wiz, when he rebalanced Miscraft for the 1.7.10 release, might have changed how these uh, um, feature pages are treated. Before, in the old version, I was I'm I'm absolutely certain that you could add in. We got some blinking actions going on. I was absolutely certain that you could add in uh, as many. Uh, features as you wanted and that suppressed the uh, miscraft gods wills basically but I removed it just to just to check it out and I have now just got one page of each and I added in a few other things just to you know even it out so I added in ravines I added in something called star fisher which is pretty cool I'll show you in a second but basically I just have one page of everything now that's the main modification I did other than that I think that we are pretty much looking at the same thing that we were looking and that we were building yeah and that gave me a, a stable world I don't know why it's blinking it could actually be lighting <laughs> and if so, it's not stable. But we don't have any debuffs. Um, no, I don't think it's lighting. I think it's something something with my graphics. Anyway, the starfisher, they're pretty dangerous, yet pretty cool. These add stability to your world. Um, this is a starfisher, by the way. It's just a hole down to the void. It's pretty crazy, as you can see. I, I won't fly down there. Um, so, so watch out, don't fall down. And this blinking is really freaking annoying. Anyway, guys, this is a stable age, and I think that uh, that we're we're pretty good to dig here. Um, what I should say or what I should note is that um, it may be so that because of other mods, for example, I have industrial craft adding oil, that may add some instability. So be sure to to have patience when playing with this mod. Okay. Uh, let's head back and talk more about instability, and then we're pretty good to wrap up this uh, tutorial. Alright, so we are back in our inspiring Mistcraft building place platform thingamajing. Uh, let's talk about instability. Um, there are a few pages, or symbols as they are really called from the author, that adds what's called instability. Now, instability will mean that the world is slowly or quickly getting destroyed. It will also mean that you get debuffs, etc. 
the instability pages you want to avoid uh, and they are as far as i know there may be a few more if so again <laughs> make sure you comment to add to this um, they are bright lighting and this is new as of this version so if you add bright lighting that will cause instability um, dense ores which is basically giving you tons of more ores than than a normal generated world accelerated will also cause instability remember this page uh, it it increases the tick rate of of your age and other block uh, modifiers for example oil block but other depending on how many other mods you have installed you'll have a, di a bunch of different blocks uh, vanilla ones for example diamond blocks will cause instability so that is the instability symbols that i know of now miscraft gods they have <laughs> they they kind of try to balance this out they have what they call a, a stability modifier so once you start adding these in you are negating the stability modifier you are destroying it you're adding on to to the to the to the instability there are pages that will that will add stability rather than destroy stability so let's have a look at those we have all of these weird effects that I was talking about. Spontaneous explosions, scorched surface, lightning strikes, and meteors. They all add to the stability of the of the age. What this means is that if you're clever and creative and, and, and smarter than I am, and if you master this art, then you could, you know, pretty simply create a world with, for example, dense ores, with tons of diamonds, uh, tendrils, and stuff that will slowly be destroyed, but you can slow it down by using these pages. Pretty, pretty epic, right? Imagine the possibilities there are. I mean, I just created a simple digging world, but you could create some pretty freaking heavy stuff with this mod, which is why I love it. Uh, anyway, guys, I think it's wrap-up time. I hope that you enjoyed and learned something from this tutorial. If you did, be sure to show me support, hit the like button down below, and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Uh, any comments are much appreciated, negative or positive. And um, yeah, I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.